I talked a little bit about getting into the call and really the last two episodes breaking down the art of it. So let's do this. Now, what I'm going to do on this is really emphasize the art part, because you've heard me talk about this over and over. It's not the science part we're missing, my friends. It's just not understanding how the art and the science go together. So you guys, you guys have the science part down, right? You, you have the information that's needed. You have the business information and you have the patient information that's needed. I just need you to back up, look at those separately and figure out how we are going to officially move, efficiently move through a call. And actually that's what we're going to do today. How are you going to efficiently move through a call and do the business priorities while at the same time making the person on the other end understand that they are actually the priority of the call. Woo, the magical voodoo here. And you guys all know I do secret callers. I do all kinds of work along these lines. I listen to calls every day. And it's one extreme or the other, right? It's all business or it's all, I'm going to call it caring. And I'm going to tell you that's not what you want to do on these calls. I listened to one yesterday. It was three and a half minutes long. And there was so much projecting out of what the person who took the call would think someone would want to hear that I actually question if that person even showed up for their visit because they were projecting out so much stuff. Didn't ask, well, have you done this before? Yes or no. And then respond off of that. They just told, well, I know you're fearful. And I was like, holy shit. Now, even if you weren't fearful, you're like, should I be? And by the way, for what this person was going to get, that was not what you wanted to say to them. But this person felt the need and urge for whatever reason to start projecting out. Maybe they heard it from one other patient. Maybe they experienced themselves. Yet I'm going to tell you empathy. That's not empathy, my friends. Telling someone, well, I've gone through the same thing. Let me share with that is not empathy. That's sympathy. And that's actually probably not even sympathy. That's you taking over the conversation. I think that's the best way to look at empathy is empathy is not sympathy. And if you're talking about yourself, it's not empathy. If you're coming from a place of your experience and putting it back to the person, that's not empathy. Empathy is asking a question. How does that make you feel? Tell me more. Tell me what are your expectations? Tell me what problems are you trying to get solved, right? Empathy is built into the science side. Now the art is doing it. So let's review this because what you're going to hear on this call, if I keep this thing's going this podcast will take forever if I keep going like that, but you guys see where we are here. Okay. And this extreme, I want you to understand the extreme of the science side is caring. I've shared this with you guys a couple episodes back. Caring is not enough. Caring will not take care and create patient success. I've heard it. I've heard it for years and years and years. Caring is not the solution, my friends. While we care, I'm like, bummer. It's a box to be checked. It's the first box to be checked. But when I get through the call and it's the only box that was checked, you're just rolling the dice. Because at the end of the phone call, the people still have fear, doubt, and uncertainty. They want an expert. And what I find when people start to share and they believe they're caring, right? They did nothing to sell an expert. So they gave nobody a reason to invest their time, money, and energy into this. Well, that sounds interesting. Man, she was so nice. Wow. She made me feel better. Yet I'm looking for an expert. I need someone who's just going to tell me what the problem is and give me a plan back. I'm not sure if this is the right place. I didn't hear any of that. Hmm. I better call the next place. That's what happens with caring, my friends. I, again, it's the first box to check. And by the way, if we, if we really get into the art of the call, caring is a result. Caring is a result. It's not the objective. Just follow the process and magically people go, wow, you really cared. It'd be like, just asked you what was important to you. So here we go. The art side of it. Write these three things down. Because what you're going to do is you're going to start practicing this. You're going to start doing this. 
and you're going to start listening to your own calls and you're going to start listening to your colleagues' calls and you're going to listen for these things, right? Number one is acknowledgement. And you guys know that's part of that five-step process I went through. Yet, I would argue acknowledgement needs to be repeated and done throughout the process. Yet, I told you why the first 30 seconds is so important with acknowledgement. Yet, now I would say continue it. So acknowledgement. Then you want to ask permission-based questions. And I've already said that, right? You want to ask permission-based questions, which, which have yes or no answers. So you can maintain control of the call and move through this call and get the information you need to make sure that person knows that you have the expert, right? Who can help them understand their problem and will give them a plan of care. Right. So asking permission based questions or yes, no questions. Now, I would say next you need to, right, ask better questions. Right. So it's not tell me your story or can you share with me? What are you looking for? Now, we got to be more specific, right? We've got to, I, I write, would write this down as a rule. What, what do you need? What answer do you need from this question? Because tell me your story is people who don't know what they're supposed to get from that story. If you understand that you need a problem to be solved in people's expectations, then that's the way you set up that question, right? So Jerry, you mentioned you had back pain. Why don't you tell me what you're having difficulty with that led you to call us today here at ABC Physiotherapy? That's the answer to the question you want. That's the question you want answered. That will make this more efficient. I've used the word efficient a lot. And people who come to me and immediately say these calls are going to go longer don't understand what needs to be done, right? And uh, sorry, don't understand the objectives of the call of what we need to collect on both sides. And then really don't understand what questions need to be asked beyond what's your name, what's your phone number, what's your date of birth, what's your insurance information, who's your doctor. That's all business. That needs to be collected. But even in that manner, asking permission-based questions and getting that information can make it seem like it's all about me. Cool. So let's dive into this, right? So I'm going to go through just a smooth, you guys are all thinking of the worst calls ever. And I'm like, look, you guys need to understand how to manage 80, 90% of the calls that come in, right? Whenever I ask front desk people tell me, you know, right, let's role play. They always want to take me through this disaster call. I'm like, can you handle the person calling in and saying, hi, my name's Jerry. I have a little back pain and I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. Because as I start role playing that, or I listen to calls, I'm like, you're not managing that properly. So let's take you through something you feel comfortable with. And let's start there. It's interesting when I ask people what's the most difficult calls you deal with, right? It's ones that start with, do you take my insurance? How much does it cost? I tell everybody, I enjoy that question the most because it puts me on point. I know exactly where I need to go. It's the people call and say, hi, my name's Jerry. I have low back pain. I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. That's when people get lazy with these calls. And they just go through and check the boxes and then this person doesn't show up. And I'm like, what happened? Well, they want to get scheduled for physical therapy for their low back pain. So I did. What, what do we know about them? They have low back pain. They're scheduled Thursday at 1030 for physical therapy. I'm like, that's it. Yeah. What do we have on them? Well, we have their doctor's name, their insurance, right? That's 98% of the calls out there. And what I'm telling you is we're going to get all that. Yet we're going to get the patient side of it and make the patient feel more heard. Make the patient hang up and go, hmm, that was different. Make the patient hang up and go, that feels right. Make the patient hang up and say, that was about me. Hmm, that was different. That's my favorite response. That was different. I'm like, oh, sweet. Because remember, everybody's bringing their biases, their beliefs, their opinions, their expectations of dealing with a healthcare office. Now, you tell me how much of those biases, beliefs, and expectations are positive. 
So if you turn that phone call into a listening, right? Into a asking questions about you type call. If you turn it into a call where I'm acknowledging, if I turn it into a call about your problems that you want solved, if I find you an expert based on what you told me and what you want, if I then tell you what's going to happen on that first visit, if I then make sure you know when you're going to get your insurance benefits slash your cost, then that's going to be insanely different than 99.999% of the interactions they've ever had with a healthcare front desk office. So the art of the first call, it's all this stuff. Acknowledgement, asking permission-based question, questions, right? That one really keeps you in control of the conversation. Then asking better questions, which we just went through. Listening, those are the four things. If you can check those boxes over and over on every first phone call, then you're winning. And then you at the front desk, helping to set people up for success, patients up for success, putting people on the schedule who will arrive and pay and then stay, you're going to be far more successful. The patients are more successful, the business will be more successful, and you will be more successful. And you will be able to measure that, Mr. or Mrs. Front Desk person. Right? The, this is part of your accountability. These are the things you take back to reviews, to weekly meetings. These are the things you look at as wins for you, the patient, and the business, right? We can measure this. How many leads? How many scheduled? How many arrived? How many of them bought a plan of care? How many of them scheduled out a plan of care, I should say? Sorry. Could go either way. Yet, when you listen to the three cell cycles, you know the, first, the second step is just agreement to a plan of care. We jump ahead. We skip these steps all the time. So I want, I want to be specific about that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm looking at the timer. And like I said, we haven't even gotten into the call. So what I want to do is I want to make this the prequel <laughs> to the art of the first call. Okay. So I want you to take all that information. I want you to make sure you have all that stuff down. And I'm going to I'm going to stop talking here and we're going to jump in and on the next episode, just go straight into the call. But I think this content stands alone on its own to really set up that first phone call. To make that first phone call more efficient, to make it more productive, to get better results from following a better known consistent process, right? Which is the first phone call intake, right? Cool. All right. Thank you. And I hope you took notes. I told you to take notes. If you didn't, it's only 10 minutes long, 15 minutes long. Go back, take notes, get all this put together. And if you have the notes together, when I'm going through the next episode, you will be leaps and bounds ahead and you'll actually get more out of it. All right. So thanks for listening. And next episode, it's the call. Cheers all.